a lot of people turn to magnesium supplements when they're dealing with stubborn anxiety, heart palpitations, muscle cramps, poor sleep, or even extreme fatigue. And that's not a bad move. Magnesium is crucial for over 300 processes in your body. But here's the thing. Many people take magnesium supplements for weeks or even months without seeing any real difference. The anxiety lingers, the heart still races, and the energy just doesn't come back. So what's going on? Well, there's often a deeper reason why magnesium doesn't seem to work. And if you overlook this reason, not only will you continue to feel awful, but you could unknowingly be putting yourself in a dangerous position. Worse, you might keep increasing your magnesium dose, switching brands, or blaming your body without ever fixing the real issue. But before we reveal what that issue is, we need to ask, are you even taking your magnesium supplement the right way? Because a surprising number of people make simple, avoidable mistakes that block magnesium from doing its job. So before we get to the actual nutrient deficiency that's often behind these unresolved symptoms, we're going to walk you through the four most common mistakes people make when taking magnesium supplements. Mistakes that can render even the best magnesium far less effective. If you're confident that you're doing everything right, feel free to skip ahead. But trust me, you might be surprised by what you learn. And real quick, before we dive in, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps us reach more people who desperately need this life-saving information. All right, let's get into it. 1. Taking too much carbs right before taking magnesium supplements. One of the biggest mistakes people make, often without realizing it, is taking their magnesium supplement shortly after consuming a carb-heavy meal. And yes, that includes so-called healthy carbs like brown rice, oats, or even sweet potatoes. Why is this a problem? Well, high-carbohydrate meals, especially those rich in starches or sugars, can drastically interfere with how your body absorbs magnesium. Here's how it works. When you consume a lot of carbs, your body produces a surge of insulin to shuttle glucose into your cells. But insulin doesn't just affect sugar, it also impacts electrolyte balance, and studies show that high insulin levels can increase magnesium excretion through urine, reducing the amount your body retains. In fact, research published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that diets high in refined carbs were significantly associated with lower magnesium status, even when magnesium intake appeared to be adequate. Even whole carbs, while healthier than refined versions, still trigger a glycemic and insulin response, especially when consumed in large amounts, which can blunt the body's ability to retain and absorb magnesium effectively. Now compare that to eating a meal rich in protein and healthy fats before taking your magnesium supplement. Why is that better? Protein and healthy fats like those found in wild-caught salmon, pasture-raised eggs, avocados, nuts, or olive oil, don't cause the same sharp rise in insulin levels. They help stabilize blood sugar, reduce inflammation, and actually support magnesium retention by keeping the kidneys from excreting it too quickly. A 2018 study in nutrients even pointed out that dietary fat helps improve the absorption of certain minerals, including magnesium, when taken with meals. Plus, protein helps stimulate the production of digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid in the stomach, both of which are essential for breaking down minerals and absorbing them efficiently. So if you've been popping your magnesium pill right after a bowl of oatmeal or a plate of rice and beans, thinking you're doing the right thing, that might explain why you're not getting the results you hoped for. 2. Drinking too much alcohol or caffeine. You might be taking your magnesium supplement religiously, but if you're also guzzling down coffee throughout the day, or regularly enjoying a glass of wine, beer, or spirits, then you could be undoing all your efforts. Let's start with alcohol. Alcohol is a known magnesium depleter. It acts as a diuretic, which means it increases the rate at which your kidneys flush out fluids, including essential minerals like magnesium. Even moderate drinking can significantly reduce magnesium levels. In fact, a study published in Alcoholism, Clinical and Experimental Research found that magnesium deficiency was present in over 60% of chronic alcohol users, and even occasional drinking has been shown to lower serum magnesium levels. But it's not just the magnesium loss through urine. Alcohol also inhibits magnesium absorption in the intestines and increases inflammation, which further taxes the body's need for magnesium. Now let's talk about caffeine, that beloved cup of coffee or energy drink. Just like alcohol, caffeine has a diuretic effect, especially in larger doses. While one cup of black coffee might not be a problem, multiple cups per day can gradually deplete your body's magnesium stores. A study published in Magnesium Research showed that caffeine increases urinary excretion of magnesium, particularly when consumed without food. Even worse, 
both alcohol and caffeine can stimulate the stress response, increasing cortisol levels. And chronic stress increases your need for magnesium even more, setting off a vicious cycle. Your body is desperate for more magnesium, but you're draining it even faster. And here's the kicker. If you're taking your magnesium with or shortly after alcohol or caffeine, you're setting yourself up for poor absorption and fast excretion, ignoring magnesium's essential cofactors like zinc, vitamin B6, D3, and K2. One of the most overlooked reasons magnesium supplements fail is because people ignore the critical nutrients that help magnesium do its job, nutrients known as cofactors. Without these, your body might struggle to absorb, activate, or retain magnesium, no matter how much you take. Let's start with zinc, a mineral that plays a vital role in magnesium absorption and transport. Without enough zinc, your body has a harder time moving magnesium into your cells where it's needed for things like energy production, heart rhythm regulation, and calming the nervous system. The problem is, many people, especially those who don't eat red meat, shellfish, or oysters, are unknowingly low in zinc. If you're on a plant-based diet or eating mostly processed foods, you're likely not getting enough from your meals. That's why it's often a good idea to supplement with 10 to 20 milligrams of zinc glycinate per day since this form is highly absorbable and gentle on the stomach. But here's an important warning, don't go overboard. Taking too much zinc, especially more than 30 milligrams daily, can deplete another essential mineral, copper. That's why if you're supplementing with zinc long-term or at doses above 15 milligrams, it's smart to also add about one milligram of copper for every 10 to 15 milligrams of zinc to keep your mineral balance intact. Another powerful cofactor is vitamin B6 or pyridoxine. It's crucial for making magnesium bioavailable, meaning it helps drive magnesium into the cells where it actually works. Several studies have shown that magnesium retention improves significantly when B6 is taken alongside it. But there's a catch. Many supplement brands add massive doses of B6, sometimes thousands of percent above the recommended daily amount, which can be harmful in the long run. High doses of B6, especially above 100 mg per day, have been linked to nerve toxicity in some people. So while B6 is essential, more is not always better. Ideally, you want to keep your daily intake of vitamin B6 below 20 mg, which is more than enough to support magnesium metabolism safely. Now, while zinc and B6 are often mentioned in magnesium discussions, most people completely forget about vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. These two play a supporting role in regulating calcium and magnesium in the body. Vitamin D3 helps improve magnesium absorption in the gut and supports immune and nervous system function. If you're not getting regular sunlight exposure, especially in the winter or if you have darker skin, you should aim for between 2,000 to 4,000 IU of vitamin D3 per day. And for every 1,000 IU of vitamin D3, you should pair it with 10 micrograms of vitamin K2, ideally in the MK7 form, to keep your levels balanced and your arteries protected, using deceptive supplements that don't actually contain what they claim to. Here's a hard truth that many people don't realize. Not all magnesium supplements are created equal, and some are downright deceptive. You could be taking your supplement daily, believing you're doing something good for your health, when in reality, you might be getting far less magnesium than you think, or worse, ingesting harmful fillers that do more harm than good. Many supplement labels are intentionally misleading. For example, a product might boast 500 milligrams of magnesium glycinate on the front, but what they're really giving you is 500 milligrams of the compound, not 500 milligrams of elemental magnesium, which is the actual usable form your body absorbs. In reality, that 500 milligrams may only deliver around 50 to 80 milligrams of true magnesium. If you don't know how to read the label correctly, you may be underdosing without even realizing it and then blaming your body when you don't feel better. If you're unsure about how to tell the difference, we've actually created an in-depth video that ranks magnesium supplements based on what they truly deliver, how much elemental magnesium you're getting, what form is best for specific symptoms, and what to avoid. You can find the link to that video in the description below. But it's not just about misleading magnesium content. Some supplement brands pack their products with unnecessary or even questionable fillers, like magnesium stearate, titanium dioxide, and microcrystalline cellulose. These compounds are often added to improve texture, prevent clumping, or extend shelf life, but many of them have not been tested for long-term safety in humans. And worse, some fillers may interfere with nutrient absorption or trigger inflammation, especially if you're already dealing with digestive or autoimmune issues. Now that we've covered the most common mistakes people make when taking magnesium, let's finally talk about the real issue. 
the hidden reason why you can take magnesium supplements for weeks or even months and still see no real improvement in symptoms like anxiety, heart palpitations, brain fog, or muscle cramps. In many cases, the problem isn't magnesium at all. The truth is, you might actually be potassium deficient. This is something that catches a lot of people off guard because potassium deficiency can mimic magnesium deficiency almost perfectly. The symptoms overlap so much that it can be incredibly difficult to tell the difference without proper testing. Constant fatigue, brain fog, muscle cramps, heart palpitations, irritability, even anxiety, all of these can be caused by either low magnesium or low potassium. And here's the shocking part. A huge number of people are potassium deficient without even knowing it. In fact, studies suggest that around 98% of Americans don't meet the recommended daily intake of potassium. That's nearly everyone. So imagine someone struggling with heart palpitations, taking magnesium every day, determined to fix the magnesium problem. But the real problem is silently potassium deficiency. That approach can be not just ineffective, it can be dangerous. Potassium deficiency isn't just uncomfortable, it's potentially life-threatening. It can raise your risk of high blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, kidney stress, and muscle breakdown. And the longer it goes undetected, the more damage it can quietly cause. The good news is, unlike magnesium, potassium levels can be detected with a standard blood test. If you're still experiencing symptoms even after months of magnesium supplementation, it's absolutely worth getting your potassium levels checked. Now, here's a crucial warning. If you do find out you're low in potassium, don't rush out to buy a potassium supplement. These supplements can be risky and are tightly regulated for a reason. Instead, the safest and most effective way to restore potassium levels is through food especially potassium-rich vegetables and fruits. Start by increasing your intake of large salads with your meals and include potassium-rich foods like avocados, spinach, Swiss chard, white beans, cooked beets, sweet potatoes, and even watermelon. Avocados in particular are a fantastic source of potassium that's also rich in healthy fats. But, and this is very important, if you have any form of advanced kidney disease or impaired kidney function, you must speak with your doctor before increasing potassium intake because too much potassium in those cases can be dangerous as well. Potassium deficiency is not something to take lightly. It can disrupt your heart rhythm, damage your muscles, impair nerve function, and raise your blood pressure, all while you're trying to fix the wrong problem with magnesium. So there you have it. If you've been taking magnesium and still feel anxious, tired, or dealing with heart palpitations and muscle cramps, don't ignore the possibility that potassium deficiency might be the real issue. We've seen how easy it is to mistake the symptoms of one for the other, and how correcting the wrong deficiency can leave you frustrated or worse, vulnerable to serious health problems. Remember, magnesium is important, but it doesn't work in isolation. You need to take it correctly, avoid the common mistakes we discussed, support it with the right cofactors like zinc, B6, D3, and K2, and most importantly, don't overlook potassium, the missing link for so many people. If you're still unsure what's going on in your body, ask your doctor for a simple potassium blood test. That one decision could literally save you from months or even years of trial and error. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who might be struggling with similar symptoms, and don't forget to subscribe for more life-saving insights like this. Your support helps us continue creating content that helps more people take control of their health naturally and intelligently. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself. We'll see you in the next video.